Right, hello everyone, my name is Pam. I'm from the Square Enix merchandise team and I work at Square Enix London. I'm going to give you a quick uh, introduction and overview of our upcoming Final Fantasy trading card game. So let's go. In this game, the purpose is to defeat your opponent by either inflicting 7 points damage or deplete his deck completely. And you play with three different types of cards, which I'm going to show you in a bit. You have to play these cards, you need to pay a cost. And to pay this cost, you need to generate resources that are called crystal points. Now, for those of you who know Magic the Gathering, the base mechanics of the game are very similar, but the pace is completely different. This was actually designed by Kagi Yamasan, who is a former Magic the Gathering champion. So this is why, okay? So the three types of cards I'm going to try to show them to you are summons, backups, and forwards. So I'm going to go through these individually. You can see the cost for each card uh, in the top left corner. So this one costs two, three, and five, okay? You can see the card's element based on its color. So for instance, yellow is earth. This is an earth deck, okay? If you want to play a card, you need to pay at least one crystal of the element of the card. So if I want to play that titan over here, I need to pay one earth crystal and another crystal of any kind, okay? Summons, they are one-shot cards. So you pay the cost, their ability triggers, and once they've been used, you put them in the break zone, which is where you discard your cards or you put your broken forwards. The second type of cards, they're a bit similar to lands in Magic the Gathering because their primary function is to generate resources. They're called backups and you're going to play them at the bottom of your field. Think there is a line there, the forwards are going to go here and the backups are going to go here. So backups, once they're in play and you dull them, they generate one resource of the color of the card. So one earth crystal every time I do that, okay? But the difference with Magic is that 80% of your backup in game have special abilities as well. So they're really more like a support cast. They're gonna buff up your attack, they're gonna make you draw more cards or deplete your opponent deck, plenty of things. They're a very, very important type of card to, uh, to win the game. And the last type of card is forward. They're essentially your attackers in the game. So you can see their power level here and it's dissociated between the attack and the defense. So for instance, if Vincent here takes 4,000 damage, his defense is gonna go down to 5,000, but he will still have 9,000 power uh, of attack, attack power, sorry. So forward, you play them at the front, like that. And then there's a very cool mechanic. When basically you attack your opponent, so you have to dot your forward like this, and it's up to your opponent to decide what he wants to do. He can choose to block as well if he, have, uh, if he has different forwards. He can choose a forward to block. Then we're going to compare the power of these two forwards. And eventually, if one of them is defeated, you put it in the break zone. But the very cool thing is that if he can't block and takes one point damage, he has to flip a card over from his deck and put it in the damage zone. And the cool thing about it is that if the card he flipped over has an EX mention, like this one, the ability of the card will trigger instantly, it can't be blocked, and you don't have to pay any cost for it. So it's a very nice way to reverse the odds. You can, you can have four damage, your opponent has zero, and all of a sudden, boom, you flip the table. That's a very cool mechanic. That's a bit of a luck factor in the game. And now the main, main difference with Magic, I mentioned the, the pacing of, of the game, and that's because there is a second way to generate resources in the game and that is done by discarding cards. You can discard any time, any type of cards, except light and dark, actually. And when you do so, you gain not one, but two crystal points of the element of the cards. So what I'm saying here is that you're never waiting to play. Like straight from turn one, you can, bam, put a, put a forward, put a back up and start, get into the action right away. And that's the very cool thing about this game. There's way more to it. There's a lot of subtleties. There's certain things that happen if you have characters that, are, that have affiliations in the original games. Like for instance, if I have uh, Titus and all of a sudden I play the Unicard, something's gonna happen. I'm gonna get some sort of bonus. So the whole Final Fantasy mythology, of course, is respected. All the abilities as well, they're, they're in there. And there's one last cool mechanic. Um, in one, when you do your deck, you need to put several cards of the same type, okay? And we have several declinations for each character. For instance, Vincent, you can get a version from Advent Children or the original game. And the cool thing with these cards is that some of them have special abilities. They're these ones here with a little red S. Uh, they come directly from the games. So once again, a, a bit of a FF background. 
And in order to trigger these abilities, because they're extremely powerful, the base cost is you need to discard a card of the same name. Not necessarily the same design, but the same name. And that's going to trigger an incredibly powerful move. So that's another thing. To finish with, uh, at launch we'll have three different starter sets uh, themed around FF7, FF10 and FF13. And the cool thing is that each of these starter sets will be based on two different elements. FF7 will be Earth and Fire. This is a good one to start with, it's pretty straightforward. FF10 will be Water and Wind. It's a bit more like uh, strategical with depleting your deck, fast playing. And the last one is FF13 with uh, Thunder and Ice. Okay. And each one of these starter sets will include not only the uh, base rule guide to, to give you like exactly what I'm doing here, but also more specific rules according to the type of uh, deck you, uh, you chose. So to explain how you should play with fire. Ha, that sounds funny. <laughs> okay, I guess that's pretty much it. So uh, I hope you're looking forward to the game. It's coming out pre-sale end of September, 30th of September, along with the FF15 release. And the release release will be around mid-October timing. Okay. And what countries are supported and what kind of languages do you support? We think we, uh, if, if there's a possibility, we will distribute it in all Europe. We think by language. So the game at launch will be available in uh, English, obviously, uh, Spanish, German and French. We're actually showing it uh, a prototype in French for the first time here at Japan Expo. And a bit further down the line in Italian as well. Okay. Yes. And how about like the other territories like the USA and Australia? US, uh, rumor has it, there's also a, a version plan, but I don't know much about it, so okay. it, should, it should come out eventually, yeah. Okay, thank you so much. No worries, pleasure. Thank you.